How's it going, y'all? This is Ryan De La Garza, and this is a Desmos demo. Here we're going to be looking at grading in Desmos, looking at activity and breaking down how do I get these check marks here on my teacher dashboard so I know that students are putting in the correct answer. So let's dive in and let's see how we made this happen. Okay, first of all, I want to take a look at the activity. What are we even working with? So here we have a multiple choice question. Uh, you know, zero is my whole number. Uh, if I look here, I have um, uh, checkbox, multiple answers, right? These are all integers. If I look here, we're okay, we're sorting. We have an order, right? Uh, and I think that's already in the right order. So there we go. Um, what is the value of x? I believe this is 2, right? And then here we have a table where I'm filling out like what are my missing points here, right? So if I'm at like negative 3, I can come down and see that's at negative 6. So this is our activity. But look up here in this little box. So this little box is our teacher dashboard preview. So I'll get it to say it here. If I preview, I see the dashboard. That means on my teacher dashboard, this is what I'm going to see. So if I put in like a negative 6 here, notice I have a dot. Well, what I want to show up is these check marks. So let's look at how we make that happen for each of these screens. Okay, first one, this one's super simple. We're having the multiple choice. So if I look at here, all I have to do is select what's the correct answer. So I'm going to mark that as zero. If I preview it, check zero, there's my checkbox. Now, something to notice here. If I select the ask student to explain their answer, if I go up here and I select zero again, it's going to give me a dot. Now, that dot's there because Desmos doesn't know if the explain your thinking is correct or incorrect, but it's just telling you right now there is nothing wrong on this screen. So the dot means that there is nothing wrong. Check mark means that everything is correct. But look here, if I select the wrong answer, I still get that X. So if I'm looking from a grading aspect and on my dashboard, I should be looking for X's because the X's are going to tell me that they missed something. A check or a dot means that everything is correct. I just need to go back and look at something if it's that dot. All right, let's look at our next screen. Next screen was our check boxes. So all again, just like multiple choice, I just have to check which answers were correct. As soon as I do that, there's my check mark. Now notice if I'm missing one, I get an X, right? So I have to have all of them correct. So that would be a great spot if you see students answering uh, and they've got a couple checked, but they still don't have that, they have that X on the dashboard. Good spot, that's a feedback flag, right? Jump in and give some feedback to that student. Here, my ordered, right? I wanna put these in order. Now, Desmos made this super easy. If I click the three dots, I can use the order as an answer key. So I check that, and now this order is automatically saved as my answer key. So if I come up here in preview, and I put these in order now, let's go, boom, there's my check mark. One out of order, X. All in order, check, good to go. All right, this one, we start to get a little bit fancy, but I promise it's manageable. My input value, now there is no easy way to find this or something that they put at the top level to be able to find and mark a correct answer. So we have to click this icon here to edit the computation layer. Now mine's green because I already have computation layer stuff in there, I already have some script. Normally it would look like this right here, um, and it's just uh, that less than slash greater than sign. So let's click this and let's see what I did here. So I did correct when this numeric value equals 2. So again, what I'm saying here is that this is going to be marked as correct when this component's numeric value equals 2. So this is saying this input component's numeric value, when it's 2, I want to mark this as correct. And that's what we're looking at here for uh, making the Desmos realize that this is the right answer. Okay, so let's hop back and let's see what this looks like. So if I go preview and now I put in a 2, I get a check mark. Put in a 3, I get an X mark. Right? So this is how we can use that math component and still get that check mark. Just a little bit of code right there. Correct this numeric value equals 2. Okay, last screen here, this graph with the points. This one we get a little bit fancier, but again, it's the same idea, so I'm going to break it down for you guys. So here I have a graph component. The first thing I need to do is I need to come into the graph and I need to put read only true. So what I'm telling this graph right now is that I only want you to read this and I want it to be true. 
So this is essentially saying don't grade this. I'm telling you that this component is correct. So we're throwing that in there and it's going to ignore the graph. Okay, so let's hop out into our table component. So now this is where we have to do some more computation layer. So what I'm essentially going to do, I know what these correct values are going to be. I know that here, uh, when x is negative 3, y should be negative 6. When y is negative 2, x should be negative 1. So I know what those answers are, right? I know negative 6, negative 1, 4, and 4. So what I need to do is go into the computation layer here and let Desmos know that. So here's what we did. So let me unhide all this stuff right here. Whoops, deleted a little too much. These little hashtag symbols let me uh, kind of mark it as a note so the code doesn't read it. So let's zoom in on this so we can really see what's going on. Okay, so here's what we have. Again, I have that correct piece, right? I want to mark this as correct when this is all true. So we have four different statements. Notice here, I have these are the numbers that we talked about, right? Negative 6, when x is negative 3, y was negative 6. When y was negative 2, x should be negative 1. So these are my numbers. But this coding right here is what's making that happen. So what I'm essentially saying is when this table, when the cell at row 1, column 2 is equal to negative 6, that's part of the puzzle for making this true. So we did that for each one, right? When I said here, row 2, column 1, when that's negative 1, row 3, column 2 is 4, and row 4, column 1 is 4, when all of those are true, I'm going to mark this as correct. And these ands are what kind of string that together, right? So when I have negative 6 and negative 1 and 4 and 4, this whole table is going to be true, right? So that's how we're telling the computation layer to check all of those cells for us out in the activity. Okay, so let's go in and see how it works. So if I preview it here, if I put in negative 6, negative 1, 4, and 4, there's my check mark. So that one's a little bit fancy. I got it. So you may need to kind of go back and check out that coding. And I'm going to put the link to this activity in the description. So if you want to dive into that and uh, kind of copy and paste that code over, so all you have to do is change some numbers around, that's totally doable. And if you need any help, please put it down in the comments and I'd be happy to jump in and help you with it as well. So again, this has been a great Desmos demo diving in for some of those self-check grading pieces. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Thank you for watching and happy Desmosing.